Hello, wherever you are tuning in from, this is the Investor's Corner, where we explore hidden treasures. I'm your host, Tech Stephen Good. In this special edition of our episode, we are glad to be joined by the Minister of Finance and Planning, Honorable Hagak Achuilwal. Thank you very much for giving us your time and speaking to us. You're welcome. Thank you. In this edition, or in this episode, we are going to basically talk about the general economy of the country, the strides and the progress made, especially with areas of payment of salaries, outstanding salaries, uh, the obligation of South Sudan to the regional and international organizations, uh, and other positive steps that are made to improve uh, the economy and uh, stabilize our currency and our economy. But we'll take it one uh, point at a time. Uh, and it is from this perspective that I would now ask you to begin by telling us about the ministry's economic reforms that you have in put in place since you came to this office to improve the country's economy. Let's begin from there. Thank you, Stephen. I'm glad that you are having me today to clarify some of the points and talk about the reforms and the economy of our country. Actually, the reforms were started before I could come in. But when I came in, I would like to continue with the reforms. And what is going on is actually we are trying to implement Chapter 4, which is in the Peace Agreement. And this Chapter 4 required the Ministry of Finance and all the economic sectors be reformed so that they perform very well and to let our economy pick up from the basis of being having good foundation to the level that where we can have diversification of the economy. So the reforms have been working very hard and they are trying to get things done in the way the world conform with the economy. And actually chapter four is dealing with public financial reforms which deal with reforms in taxation or revenue authority, also reforms in our cash management system, also reforms in our accounting section, including the budget planning that we should plan our budget on time. Like all the East African community have got a rule and a policy that all the budgets of the East African countries should be presented at the same time to their assembly, to their various assembly. This year we managed to to prepare our budget and we actually passed it through the cabinet last week and it is now the last day. Tomorrow will be the last day of budget sealing for different agencies trying to put that uh, budget sealing together and from there the budget will go to the National Assembly mm. within the coming week. Mm. So that shows that we are now performing well. We have now t uh, table our budget at the right time and actually it should be taken to the na National Assembly before the end of June. It should be discussed in the National Assembly which is the period is supposed to be discussed. And by the end of June I believe the National Assembly will pass the budget. So we are on time and these are part of the reforms. They want us to table our budget on time. They want us also to, to follow the budget lines such so that we don't deviate from the way we are spending. That means that we should minimize our expenditure and try to improve the collection of rev revenue such so that some of these resources can be put on the agricultural projects and other projects which can diversify the economy. Mm. And like I said, we will take it one step at a time. Uh, in these reforms, uh, can you also briefly touch on the issue of the arrears of the salary of public servants? Uh, because as we stand uh, right now, there has always been delays in salary uh, payment of public servants. Uh, and recently there has been uh, talks about your ministry releasing uh, at least two months of, uh, of uh, salaries. Uh, while we know that we are in June, that is six months uh, uh, behind. Can you tell us about the structures that you have put in place uh, to complete the six-month outstanding uh, salary so that we enter a financial uh, fiscal year with a new uh, budget that we start uh, from afresh? What, what are the plans that you've put in place to ensure that the outstanding backlog in the salary structure or payment of the arrears is resolved? Yes, thank you for that question. Uh, Actually, we met economic sector, met with the president, including the security sector. Uh, we met in the office of the president and discussed this issue of the arrears and how we can fast track the elimination of the arrears. 
a decision was made that we should use our oil uh, revenue, which is for July and August, to eliminate all the arrears, especially the arrears from January up to May. And now we are paying two months' salary at present. The checks are being given. Some of them were taken on Friday. Finally, on, on Monday, some of the checks will be released for the salaries of two months and operation for the government agencies. This is being done in uh, regard to the what has been decided that we should eliminate the arrears before the end of the year, of the physical year. And after two weeks from here, on the 18th of this month, another two months will be paid. We divided the, the period into two, two weeks, at least to try to control the inflation, because it will release the bulk of money at the same time. That will increase the volume of the money in the market, and that will make the, uh, increase the inflation to the level that it cannot be controlled. So I agreed with the governor of the bank that we do it in the phase of two weeks, while he is himself, as you, I think, as you have heard in this press conference, that he is going to release some money for auction this week. That is another way because we are releasing the salary, so the pounds are going to be increasing the market, and he's going to take the uh, the auction to the market, so that to reduce the volume of the money in the market to control the inflation. So this is done in, uh, in, 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 the, in the process of good plan which has been put forward, that we, we release two, two months, and then after two months, after another two weeks, on the 18th of this month, it's actually a week from now, then we will release another two months. That will be four months, and we will be left only with May and June. And we flesh that May and June will be, will be cleared by the end of June. Say that the whole financial year we don't have in arrears, and we go into a new financial year without arrears. The only arrears we will be there is the foreign missions, but we made a provision for them. While we are doing this, actually we also released two months for the foreign missions with the same two months I'm talking about. Mm. So anytime, another two weeks from now or another week from now, we are going also to release another two months for the foreign mission. So we are at the, at the process of clearing the arrears. By the end of August, possibly, even the foreign missions are yes will be cleared mm -hmm. because it has been an order from the office of the president that we use oil revenue to clear all these areas, say so that we have a clean plate with a new financial aid. Yes, and based on your explanation, uh, if, if, you have, if the payment that has been put in place is after two weeks, uh, we are in mid-June now, so by end of uh, this month, uh, your ministry shall have cleared the, all the areas of the public servants and also mentioning the issue of the uh, of the foreign missions and diplomats uh, foreign missions have been having more areas as compared to public servants yes. if i'm not wrong i think it's sometimes even more than 15 16 or even 20 months uh, what is the structure that is put in place to address them will we, will they also uh, meet the public servants um, plans that you have put in place to clear them uh, by the end of this financial year or there's may wait for a while because it, they have more month that is uh, in the areas. The reason they will not be cleared by the end of the financial year is that they have more months to be paid. First of all, when I came in, they have 27 months which has not been paid, areas, including the rents of the embassies. I came and gave them three months and some rents of the embassy, but it went back again for another three months to 26 months. So now we, we paid two months, then we have reduced the 26 to 24. And we will pay another two months in the coming week. That will reduce from 24 to 22. While we are doing this, as soon as we cleared the areas of the civil servants and organized forces within and national and the states within the, the country, then the foreign missions are also part of the plan that they should be cleared before the end, uh, not the end, before the third quarter of the next financial year. Mm. And this is in plan because why? Even now, on Monday, one of the uh, issues which is uh, a standing block to our, uh, to our government is the payment of, of international fee mm. to international organizations like AU, mm. IGAD, African, uh, that is African Union, and then East Africa Community. Mm. Those people, and even the UN, 
those are also in the plan that we should clear all the arrears. Mm. Now the arrears of AU have not been cleared for five years. But tomorrow I had a plan that I'm going to clear the arrears of five years mm. of AU because it is one of the most important things that our people should be comfortable going for the conference or going for the meetings of AU. Mm. If we don't clear the arrears, we have already been suspended. So now I'm going to start on Monday to clear the arrears of AU. And the money is right there. We borrow the money from the institution to pay this. Mm. Say that we cover that. As soon as our oil revenue comes, we will put it in. And then we are also clearing. We are going also to be clearing IGAT. We are going also to be clearing East Africa community arrears. Mm. Say that our people, when they go in the meeting, they feel comfortable and they can represent us with a dignity. Because our people are being shouted at that you people don't pay. Yes. So this plan is there and we need to clear it because the president gave me an okay to go ahead, use the oil revenue, and then clear all these areas, including the foreign missions. Yes, and still on this same issue which I was going to ask you, good, you raised it, the uh, South Sudan's obligations to these regional and international organizations. What are the methods that have been put in place to identify the uh, institutions that are of uh, immediate concern if I can put it that way, because you now mentioned that uh, maybe periodically you begin with the, with the UN and then as you move on to the African Union, the East African Community, IGAD and others. Uh, is there a priority that has been put in place to identify the institution that needs to be addressed first? And also, uh, you've also mentioned that uh, the arrears of some of these institutions goes back as to five years, like you mentioned with the UN. What about the other relevant institutions that we also have, like the uh, IGAD and the AU, AU and EAC? What are the areas of South Sudan? Uh, how long have they been overdue? And uh, in the method that you have put in place now in paying them, how much time did you put in place to clear maybe all of them? Is it going to be in phases or at once? Uh, it's going to be either in phases, if the amount is big, then we can do it by, by stages, like the first installment, second installment, to clear the areas. But the idea is that the plan is there to clear all the areas within three months. And if we clear these areas, then we will plan. Our plan will be that annually or yearly, we should not delay the payment of the fee. Because the more we delay, and we think that it is a minimum amount, the more they accumulate and becomes an embarrassment to our country. So the best thing is to clear the areas and then put plan in place. Any time we are supposed to pay that in advance, we pay like small organizations like UNESCO, other organizations like in Geneva, all these things are very few amount of money. They goes up to thousands and thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. But if you clear them earlier, some of them are sometimes only three thousand. But if you keep accumulating them, they goes to thousands and thousands until it becomes millions. So we are planning that as soon as we clear the areas, we have to put a plan in place. Every month we have to see which organization need money from us as a fee. And we clear it. Say that our people go there freely and they can vote. Mm. Because if our people don't pay the arrears or clear the fee, we are not given a chance to vote. You can go there and sit as a guest and you listen and you will never talk and you will never vote. Mm. Yes, and, and, and also uh, recently your ministry has organized a three days workshop uh, on fiscal year budget uh, on government and government spending agencies. Uh, I believe the emphasis of the workshop was on the national budget, which you, you mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, and it is on that note that I would also like to ask you on this budget that is about to be passed maybe by the end of this month or early next month, what is the expectation of South Sudanese in ensuring that the new budget will address uh, the issue of the economy, especially uh, uh, the, the, this, this, uh, uh, the rising cost of living and all this? How can the, the new budget address most of these uh, economic issues? Well, we, in the budget, in the new budget, which is a fiscal year for 2022-2023, we have increased a small percentage to the Ministry of Agriculture. That is, we give them some money which can enable them to buy some tools and equipments, which can enable them to activate or to revive those, uh, those projects which were uh, national projects like a world scheme rise, like other uh, schemes which have been put 
in order, but we have, have been neglected for all this time. So we has increased the budget of agriculture so that they can buy tools to activate those projects to start over again, so that they can be producing some f more food for our people. And they can even produce more food to the level that, that the, the food will be enough for us and we can even sell to the other, to other neighboring countries. For instance, like agriculture in, uh, projects in Rang. Their problems are always fuel and equipment. And now if we have increased the budget of the agriculture, then they will address those ones. And there is, there is a possibility that the production of sorghum and other cash crop like uh, simsime, other cash crop like sunflower, and even they can even produce wheat within the, the northern Barghazar area. And when they do produce more food, that means that we will have enough food for our local people. And if there is an extra, then we can sell it out. Mm -hmm. There are agricultural products in Western Equatoria and Eastern Equatoria. If there is peace in those areas, then we will enable, we will try to, to enhance the agriculture and the other projects so that they, they, they can uh, manage to produce more food for our people and encourage our farmers also by guidance through the Ministry of Agriculture to produce more food say that the local people have their own food rather than buying food from our neighboring countries. That by itself will bring down the prices. This will not only be agricultural alone, but it goes into also like animal resources and fisheries. There are projects which can even bring more money. We have a lot of fish, we are not making use of them. But if they are given more money towards those projects, that will be, they will be able to produce more fish. And then we can even export fish to European Union or to other European countries. Also, on the other side of the mining, we put more money in the mining sector, so that they can survey all our minerals, and they know where the minerals are, iron ore, gold, diamond, wherever they are. Where it is surveyed, then the investors can come in, and they will not have a problem to go and find out where the gold is. The survey will show where the goal is and then the Ministry of Mining and the Ministry of Investment will be able to direct people to those areas where they can go and put their projects there and then produce more of, what, of the minerals we have and then sell them. That will improve our economy. Yes. And when we do that, it will reduce the prices and will also stabilize our currency. Mm. So the issue of our currency which is now floating, going up and down because we are not producing enough food for ourselves and we are buying everything from outside. So this will help, I think with the new budget, it will help because the government is planning to revive all these agricultural projects and also planning to put more money in the mining sector and, and animal resources so that they can work concurrently with other economic sector like oil and all this. When all these things are improved with the oil enhancement, then the economy will start improving. Yes. And when the economy starts improving, our currency will be stabilized. And when the currency is stabilized, the issue of the prices will be, the dollar will be even, our currency will be stronger than the dollar. And when our currency is stronger than the dollar, then it will be easy for, for, for the national to buy food from, from our own country. He will not talk of dollar again, that the dollar has gone up or has gone this way. Because our currency will be able to buy anything in the market. So I think that is the plan with the new budget, and we are working towards working uh, very hard to say to make sure that we take it to the assembly, and the assembly are also working very hard to see that the budget is brought to them, and then they deliberate on it, and they will also look at the the gaps. They may include something which we have left out, and they may increase the budget according to what they see is very important, and all these things are going to be addressed by the new budget. Well, uh, hold that thought, uh, Honorable Minister. We'll take a short break and we'll come back to talk more on these economic reforms. Stay tuned. The Investors' Corner will be back shortly. There are plenty of investment opportunities in this world's youngest nation of South Sudan. To better understand the economy and explore the thriving market of this country, you ought to get out of your comfort zone. You either hustle under the scorching sun in Konyo Konyo market, run errands at a small or medium business enterprise, or better yet, chair a conglomerate board meeting at a high-end tower in Juba. While awaiting an official business trip to the region. 
Whatever you do, just don't rest. Work hard, think big, and be smart in order to count all your economic blessings through this weekly business show of the Investor's Corner, exploring hidden treasures. Join us every week at this time. Welcome back, wherever you're tuning in from. You're still watching The Investor's Corner, where we explore hidden treasures. I'm your host, Tech Stephen Good. And as you've seen before the break, I am joined by the Minister of Finance and Planning, Honorable Agak Achwilwal. Thank you very much, and welcome again. Before the break, we were talking about the reforms, and you were mentioning about uh, strategies that have been put in place to stabilize our currency and also to strengthen the economy. And on that note, uh, Last week, the uh, Central Bank of South Sudan, or the Bank of South Sudan, has uh, called for a press conference where they uh, announced that the Bank of South Sudan will be auctioning eight million uh, to stabilize uh, the, 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 the market and also to strengthen the local currency. Your take as the Ministry of uh, Finance on this auctioning that the Bank of South Sudan is doing uh, towards that end. Well, that is a good idea because if we, if we pay salaries arrears, that is the volume of money we are putting in the market. And if we put that in the market and it is not counteracted by the Bank of South Sudan, that means that the inflation will go up. So what they are doing is in conjunction with what we are doing. We are paying out some money and they are doing cal their calculation, how much volume of money going to the market. And that's why they are putting out this auction to try to collect more money which is in the market causing inflation back to the bank. And then when we put another two month salary out, they will also do the same. So they have to control the rising dollar price and the inflation. So it is going well with us. I think they are conforming well with their monetary policy which they are doing, with the physical policy we are doing. Because when we pay the arrears, it is a chunk of money. And that chunk of money shall, cannot just go to the market and will leave the market as this. It will, it, there will be fluctuation in the market prices and all this, and inflation also. Mm -hmm. So they are counteracting that by doing that to control the inflation and also to destabilize our currency. Mm -hmm. So the policy is okay with us. Yes, and uh, also there is the, the issue of, uh, of debt, South Sudan's debt. You have mentioned uh, how the ministry and the government at large is planning to address the issue of, uh, of uh, the, the arrears that are, that, that are uh, doubling up uh, in a very chronological manner, both inside and for our foreign missions outside. But what are the plans that the ministry has put in place to address the issue of the national debts that are also accruing and are also accumulating uh, every now and then? How can they be addressed in a way that it will not put a country in a trap? We have a plan. Our plan is to to structure our debts by putting our debts together, knowing how much is owed outside there. So we have s some few companies which we owe some money. For instance, say QNB. For instance, uh, Sara Energy Company Limited, and others like Nasdaq and African Exxon Bank. So we are trying to put these debts together. And we are trying to find, we are actually negotiating with some institutions. We have started the negotiation already. But the problem that the, materi uh, the uh, negotiations have not materialized. As soon as they materialize, I will let you guys know. But the plan is to found one financial institution or one country which is willing to bail us out, to buy all these debts. And then we deal with one person or one institution dollars. If anybody offer to buy this, then we will sit and negotiate with him. The rate of interest, the period of payment, because if we, we put it at a long length, because if we squeeze it, then it will put pressure on us. But we put it at a long length, then we agree with them what is going to be the interest, and then we agree with them. Then that time, we will have now our collateral, which is the oil proceeds. And we will have one person to deal with. And if we have one institution to deal with, that means that uh, I will have a chance to tell him, look, every two months I will give you a cargo. Or every three months I will give you two cargos. And then the other three months I use the oil proceed for running the government. That way it will ease the pressure on the government and government will have enough money 
to take some of this money and put them on the agricultural projects and other development projects while we are paying our rent, our, our debt, slowly until we eliminate it. It is not a shame for a country to have a debt. America has four trillions from, Russia, from China and they are paying it by slow motion by according to their agreement. So if we found an institution which will take all our debts and then we agree that every three months we pay him this and at the other months we use this proceed for, for running the government and paying our operations and also agriculture projects and government development projects, roads and infrastructure, uh, infrastructure, then we will be able to manage. The reason why we are not managing now because we are a spread. Mm. I pay this company, the other company say, what about me? You pay that company, the other company will say, what about me? So if you structure it in a way that you deal with one person, then you agree. Every three months, my, my brother, mm. I will give you this, or my friend, I am going to give you this. The other month, I have to run my government with this. You will not have any problem because it is an agreement. And when you are dealing, when the country is dealing with one person or one institution, it makes it easier. Mm. Our problem is because we assign all these small uh, companies and they always come looking for, okay, this cargo was assigned to me, you default it, you, you have to give me this, and then you, you pull it from somebody and you give it to the other company. This is where we have a problem. But if you agree with one company, to buy all the debts and you deal with one institution, it will be easy for the government to deal with it. Mm. And that will make it easy for us to run the government and also use some of the money mm. for the agricultural projects and the development projects, which will be easy for the government to move forward. Yes. And that will be easy. Even You will not have even the idea of arrears. There will be no arrears because you have some money there which you can use every month. Every month of the 28th of, of that month, you should pay the, the salary of that month. Mm. And you will not have any problem at all over this. Yes, and uh, an another burning issue uh, in the in the international arena today is the war in Ukraine, uh, which has affected the prices of crude oil. Uh, one would say in a positive way for an oil-producing country like South Sudan because the oil prices have risen, uh, but also negative in another way because South Sudan does not. Uh, uh, refine its oil is still buying oil and uh, the refined oil also has gone up so it's a double-edged sword uh, and similarly also to the food uh, commodity prices uh, what are the strategies that are put in place uh, by South Sudan and by your ministry to ensure that whatever is happening uh, further afield doesn't have a ripple effect in South Sudan especially when it comes to commodity prices and the purchasing power yes the impact of the war of Ukraine have really cause economic shocks all over the world. It's not only Southern Sudan. The advantage is that the prices are going up. For those who are producing oil, it is advantage on one way. But for those like our country, which is a landlocked country and a fragile country, uh, the prices of everything we import have gone up. The prices of the food, the prices of the fuel. And when the prices of fuel goes up also, that means that the transportation goes up and everything imported goes up. So on the other way, the little gain we are getting from the oil which is going up is being eaten away by the prices of the things we are importing. That, the solution to that is going to be enhancement of the oil production. We increase the oil production we have. There are some blocks actually which are sitting down, there is a lot of oil in it, and they are not being tapped on. These blocks, we the Ministry of Petroleum can find new explorers who can come and invest on those blocks. That would mean that we we'll produce more oil. And when you do oils in elements, that means that you get a new technology. A new technology to the level that with the little floods we have, they will be able to produce oil within that area because there is a technology, of, especially the American technology and the Russian technology, is very good to the level that even in the in the ocean, they can produce oil. So if we get this technology in southern Sudan here, it will produce more oil from our south region. And when we produce more oil, that means that we will be selling more oil and we will have more revenue coming in. That will help us to diversify our economy. Yes. And when we have more money, we can put the money in education, agriculture, infrastructure, health, 
and that will ease the life of people in southern Sudan. Yes, and on that note also, Honorable Minister, uh, South Sudan is fully relying on the oil uh, to fund its activities. Uh, what happens to other uh, non-oil related revenues that most of our neighbors in this region rely on, but they are also doing well? What is the plan of the ministry and of the government to ensure that we can also rely on uh, non-oil uh, revenues to empower the economy of the country. Uh, because right now, as we speak, uh, the ministry and the government at large is trying to address uh, burning issues like the arrears, like the obligations, uh, like the settling of the debts. But inside the country also, there is a need to address competing interests, like the implementation of the peace agreement, which also needs funding, uh, like the floods that are now affecting a number of places in the country which also needs government to fund uh, these mitigation efforts uh, as well as developmental projects uh, in the country all these cannot be only settled with reliance over the uh, oil so what are the plans now to improve the revenue collection and if you may also add on the double barred question apologies for that recently we have seen uh, custom has been moved uh, and put as a subsidiary of national revenue authority what are the plans well, that was one of the move of the plans was done in order to reform the system of the NRA. The reason why the custom was put under custom, first of all, when they made that uh, act of revenue authority, the act was made for two institutions, taxation and custom, to be under one umbrella, under one command, say so that the, the custom should not go back to Ministry of Interior to get orders from Ministry of Interior. But now they put custom under revenue authority, such so that it is one direct command. Instead of last time, they used to go back to the Ministry of Interior. Now they report to the CG, which is uh, the Commissioner General. The Commissioner General is now the boss for the custom and is the boss for the taxation. The reason it made such so that the channel of command goes down accordingly. There's somebody should not think that I'm not a part of this. I'm a part of interior. So that thing is made to ease the command so that the, it, it is another way of making it easier that they should organize themselves and collect more money for the government. It is a part of the reforms. Revenue authority is also another way of trying to get more revenue so that we can put all this revenue into operations of the government and also sometimes with this money, if it is collected properly, it can help us even to put on them some of the money into the development projects. So the reforms are going on within the Revenue Authority. We are planning also to buy a scanner now for Numli, and then we see how that scanner will improve the revenue collection on, uh, on the, that uh, post, which is the Numli post. If we put the scanner there and it is working well, then we should plan for more scanners for the other positions, uh, like uh, the other borders, border posts of uh, Majong and Teo. Rang, and even the border post of Kenya, Nepal, and other border posts where you'll come up like the corridor through, whereby we, it's going to be open two corridors to Ethiopia. Then we put some scanner there that will improve the revenue collection, and then also without the corruption within the system, mm. minimize it. I know it is not easy mm. to 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 cook, eliminate it completely. There is an issue you also need to address. Uh, I will not dwell on the first issue. The first issue would have been uh, the incident where you gave a press conference and you were misquoted or quoted by one of the uh, local news agencies. Uh, but I would also like to ask you about another one where you were quoted by Citizen Number no. One uh, newspaper saying that you have mentioned in one of the press conferences uh, that you have said that the gold of South Sudan has been sold. What is your statement exactly on that? And if you have a clarification for our general audience to understand what you meant by that statement. Yeah, that is a good question. Yes, if you were to get the whole text of what I said in that conference, it would be easy to say that I was talking about diversification of the economy. And when we diversify the economy, as I said before, agriculture, fisheries and gold and mining, then you mean to say that we put more money in the mining sector. And when we put more money in the mining sector, that means that we give them money to get the survey done. We give them money so that they can have a mining uh, factory for the gold, so that it is mined and put in blocks. And then it's stem that this gold is from Southern Sudan. And when we do that, that means that we put more money in the mining sector. 
economy improves by doing all these sectors. And when you improve this sector, that means that the survey will be done, they will have mining uh, factory where they will mine the, uh, the gold, and then you put more money so that they know where the gold is. And when the investors come, the investors will go to the mining sector knowing which area they are going to. Like if the investors come now, I will not say, okay, you go to Maban. And I even, I'm not sure what is in Maban. They will say, what do you, he, he's going to explore and take some time. But if we have already done the survey and we know in Maban there is enough gold there, then I will tell them, if you are in here for investment in gold, then go to Maban, go to Buma, go to Kapoita, go to Luri, go to Kit, wherever we see that there is enough gold. Or if there is a diamond, wherever we see it, according to the mi uh, mining survey, there is a lot of iron ore. There is a lot of other cables and other things. All these things, when we, we put more money in that section of the mining, then we will have investors, and they will invest on those mining. The artisans, maybe, to say the local artisans, were there before even the Ministry of Mining could, could start. If you could remember, in, uh, during the regional government, there were people who used to run from here to Kapoita, and especially, they go and buy from local artisans. And the local artisans bring it as a raw material. It is not mine, it is not concrete. Mm. But they buy it from them and then they go and sell it on their own. Yes. So that was the statement I made about the diversification of mining sector, such that they we have credible companies to come and invest in mining and then export our gold through the government or through the Bank of South Sudan. Yes, and uh, as we conclude, Honorable Minister, your takeaway point uh, for our viewers? Well, I would say the best thing is that we have, uh, our people of South Sudan are really very strong people. They have resilience and they have endured a lot of su suffering through a lot of crisis they went through. And I believed uh, they are still enduring a lot of suffering up to now. But what I can say is that the, the government of South Sudan, which is the peace agreement they made, the government of national unity, which is now at present, is in for the peace. And the key to our people is peace. If peace is maintained and there is security, then most of these problems will be overcome. So I'm asking our people to be patient, and everything will be done as soon as we maintain peace. Everything will be done because everybody, wherever they are, are working very hard to make sure that everything is done the right way. And our people are very strong. If there is peace, even you not ask them to go and cultivate, they will do it on their own. Because it is a part of practice of South Sudanese to, resist, to live on their own. They don't want to be given by other people. Even during our school days, I remember, uh, we don't know this UN. We only hear that they used to bring us sheets and seredine for the schools. And we don't see the UN dropping food somewhere as they were before the war. Everybody was happy, doing their own small subsistence cultivation, and uh, life was going on. So what we can do now is to put our thoughts together and work hand in hand, so that we get out of these difficulties and we we develop our country, which we are proud of. So I ask all the citizens to be patient, work very hard, and then it should not be a duty of one person. It should be a duty of everybody. Like what you are doing to me now, it is part of your duty, and you are going to report to the public to hear what we are saying, what are the plans, what do we want to do. As soon as we do the right thing, everybody does the right thing. The country will move forward, and our people and our generation will be happy to see that our country is moving. South Sudanese are very proud people. I need that spirit to come back. The spirit when we got our in independence. Everybody was jubilant. Everybody was dancing. Everybody was happy. This is the spirit we, we want. We don't want this spirit. When somebody tells you, Malaysia, I am not with a Malaysia. You better learn to accept the mistakes 
and accept also somebody apologizing and you apologize on the other side if we do that mm. the country will move forward indeed uh, uh, peace patient and hard work uh, your takeaway points thank you very much uh, honorable uh, minister of finance uh, and planning honorable agak achwilwal for giving us your time and talking to ssbc thank you very much thank, thank you for having me thank you thank you very much <laughs> And uh, this brings us to the end of the Investor's Corner, where we explore hidden treasures. I've been your host, Tech Stephen Good. Until we meet again, goodbye.